So starting August 17th, which is coming up really quickly, home sellers will not be allowed to offer a buyer agent commission. Okay, there, I said it. And here's the thing. They can still pay the buyer agent commission, but it's going to be in the form of concessions. They're going to be able to offer seller concessions as they always have that the buyer can then use for whatever they want. They can use it for title work. They can use it for prepaids, uh, closing costs. They can use it to buy the rate down and they can use it for the buyer agent commission. They can actually do this. The DOJ is fine as far as what I can tell. And I'm going to share with you some information here. From what I can tell, the DOJ is fine with the buyer taking some of the seller concessions and using it towards a buyer agent commission. It's stated specifically in this new listing agreement in California. Okay. And everybody thinks California's a different world and you know they have different rules. And it listen to me. The DOJ is nationwide and this is what they want. Now, over in California, I've talked to many agents and they say that, you know, we can't even uh, offer the buyer agent commission outside of MLS. Right. Because like in my market, my my MLS, my board of realtors, they put in an email that was sent a couple of weeks ago about this August 17th date coming up. And the fact that you can't offer buyer agent commissions on MLS, but you can offer it. They say very clearly you can offer it on your website and other forms of advertisement, just not on MLS. And my whole question the entire time was, why? Why are you going to take it away from MLS, but you can put it everywhere else? Well, in California, and I haven't verified this just talking to a few agents they've told me that you can't even put it on your mls anywhere now you can put seller concessions okay and seller concessions are seller concessions you can use it for whatever you want repairs title work buyer agent commission whatever the buyer wants to use it for okay they can use it for that but the fact is is that it's not going to be classified as buyer agent commissions and furthermore, you cannot, you cannot take your listing commission and say, I'm going to give some to the buyer agent. That's something that they absolutely will not allow. And this is the decoupling, right? We've heard that rule and that word over the past year to two years quite often that they want to decouple commissions and they are accomplishing that goal. So they're okay with the seller paying some of the buyer agent commissions, but it's through the form of concessions, okay? And it can't be coupled with the listing agent fee. So that brings up a very important question here because moving forward, the buyer is gonna be responsible for their commissions. Right? The buyer's going to be responsible for the commissions the same way they've always been responsible for their closing costs. Do sometimes a seller take care of their closing costs? Sure. Will sometimes a seller take care of the buyer agent commission through the same form of concessions that they've always taken care of buyer's closing costs? Sure. It's going to happen. But the fact remains that, this, that the buyer is going to be responsible for it moving forward. And the big question is, is will buyers be okay? All right? will, they, will they be all right with covering that fee, right? That's the big question in the industry. How are buyers gonna receive this new world that we live in where they are now responsible for that buyer agent commission? Now, as a real estate agent, you know, I've gotten so many questions from you guys about how am I going to convince a buyer to, to pay me? How am I going to get them to sign the buyer agency agreement, et cetera, et cetera. So I have three questions that I want you to think about as you're processing this, as this is digesting in your brain about this new world that we're about to be thrown into really quickly. Um, and all the adjustments that we're going to have to make in our business and all the adjustments that buyers and sellers are going to have to make as well. Because, you know, sure, if a seller gives an agent a listing for 2 or 3%, are they saving money? Oh, you, you betcha, they're saving money. But here's the flip side. When they sell, what they're going to do, they're going to buy. And now they're going to be in the buyer shoes. And now they're going to have to pony up and pay their own agent if they, in fact, want representation. Okay, so I've got three questions that I want to I want you to think really long and hard about. I want to give you a, a, a lot to think about when it comes to this so that you can be best prefer, prepared to go out here and really take advantage of this. Because after really realizing what's happening 
that they are going to decouple, that they are going to make it impossible for us to couple, that they're going to separate this and that the buyer is going to be responsible. I am convinced that the commission pool is going to drop. How much? I don't know, but it's definitely going to drop 20, 30 percent something like that. I, I don't know, maybe even more, because if you get into a situation where sellers are, are, are doing listings for 2%, okay, if two, if it starts to become a two to two and a half instead of two and a half to three. So you've also, you've reduced the buyer side commission, but then you've also reduced the listing side a little bit. So who knows how far this could go as far as the entire commission pull. But my point is this, even with the reduction of the entire, you know, gross uh, commission pool, which, by the way, was a hundred million dollars, around a hundred million dollars, uh, a couple years ago during the boom years, right? It was ninety million, a hundred million, eighty million. I don't know what it was last year, and on what's going to be this year. You know, we're having some down years, so I don't know what those commission rates, what the, what the commission pool looks like for what agents actually made. Uh, over a 12 month period for the last couple of years. Um, I'll look that up and I'm interested to know, but the fact is, is that whatever it is, is going to be reduced. But here's my point. Even in the reduction, there are going to be lots of agents who make a lot more money because of this situation, right? I want to get into all of this. I want to give you a different perspective because I want to do everything I can do to help you absolutely crush the new market and crush we will. So before I get into uh, before I get into that, I want to share with you uh, why I believe the things that I believe. Okay. So first off, there's an article here that I covered last week. Okay, and I just want to share this little this piece of it right here. Okay. Another alternative would be an injunction that forbids the seller from making an offer of compensation to the buyer broker at all. OK, this alternative is proposed by the Department of Justice in its statement of interest in the United States in the CELIC. OK, this would stop the price fixing behavior, the actual illegal activity from recurring. So this alternative of injunction that forbids the seller from making the offer of compensation to buyer broker at all is proposed by the Department of Justice. And they've said this over and over and over again. So we know that this is what they want. We know that this is what they want. And, you know, they don't have to come out here and say, well, you can't offer a buyer to commission. They could just make it impossible to do so based on the rules. Um, and then the, the rules are backed by the antitrust price fixing lawsuits and the settlements and everything else. So now they have something to so something to stand behind to actually try to make this a reality. And then if you look at the California listing agreement, right, which I believe that this is what the entire country will go to. I honestly believe that this setup of how they're doing it in California, although as different as California can be to the rest of the country sometimes, I believe that this is where we are headed here. Okay. So if you look at the listing agreement, uh, from the California Association of Realtors. This says draft, but this is actually the, the new one that is out there now. If you go to the C section, which is um, the compensation, it says notice the amount or, or rate of real estate commissions is not fixed by law. Um, they are set by each broker individually and may be negotiable between seller and broker. So they're letting the seller know, hey, this can be negotiated. And if you look at C1, it says compensation to the seller's broker, only seller side of transactions. So again, they're kind of echoing it and saying it a little louder. Like this is the compensation from the, to, from, to the, from the seller to the seller's broker. And this is only for the seller side. So it's not like you can slip it in there and say, Hey, you know, we're going to, we're you know, we're, you're going to pay me, you know, 6%, we'll put 6% right here. And I'm going to give some to the buyer agent. That ain't going to happen anymore. That it just, it's just not in here anywhere. But what I find interesting about this, what I find interesting is this C2. Okay. Uh, you can check this box and it says additional additional compensation to seller's broker if buyer is unrepresented. Now, I thought that that was interesting to see that in there. What does that tell me? It tells me that they realize, I, you know, 
in my opinion, we're talking about the DOJ here, that they realize that what they're doing is going to cause buyers to go straight to the listing agents. Not all of them, of course, right? A lot of buyers are going to pay their own agents. Right. I get it. Um, however, there are going to be a flood of buyers who say, I ain't going to pay my buyer. I, I, you know, I don't need an agent. All right. And the ones that say they don't need an agent are the least experienced. Most of the time, they don't realize what they need an agent for. And by the way, I, I've come up with a paragraph to articulate what our values are to a buyer as a buyer's agent. I'll read that to you in just a second. It's nothing crazy. It's just something to give you an idea of what you should be thinking about in terms of articulating your value. But most of the time, the people that think that they don't need an agent, they don't understand the process enough to know they need an agent. So they go out here and try to do it on their own, go directly to a listing agent. Fine, go do that a couple of times. You'll come running right back to us, just like the experienced buyers are now. The people that know, they get an agent, right? I believe that more experienced buyers are going to use an agent unless they just are okay doing all that work on their own. And some will. I mean, there's for sale by owners. There's there's plenty of buy by owners, and there's going to continue to be for sale by owners and buy by owners. Absolutely. Um, however, I think that this is going to increase the number of buy by owners, people who buy without an agent and are unrepresented. And I think that's what's bad for the industry, right there, unrepresented buyers. But hey. I get it. This is where we are. But I find it interesting that this is in there about um, making more money. So this gives you, right, where let's just say you're going to do 3% to list the property, right? You're going to make 3% when it sells. However, if there's a buyer agent, if, if there's a buyer that comes directly to the listing agent unrepresented, right, then the seller is going to pay me, let's just say 1%, right? Let's just throw a number out there. Maybe it's one and a half or two, whatever it is. Say you get three to list it and to market it and to sell it and negotiate for the seller and, and have a fiduciary duty to get them the best deal at the best price and the best terms. And there's this additional clause where if an unrepresented buyer comes to you and they buy the property, the seller's going to pay you, let's just say an additional 1%. Now you're getting three to, to list it and four if you actually uh, represent, not represent, if, if a buyer comes to you unrepresented, right, with no agent, and you have to do that extra work for the buyer, right, the contract, you know, back and forth, this, that, and the other, all those little things, because the fear was this, that, that if we take listings at 3%, and a buyer comes directly to us, because they don't want to pay their own agent, that now the listing agent is going to be doing twice the work, representing two sides, there's two people, that's twice the work, for half the money, because we used to get five or six in those scenarios. Now, what I'm understanding, and the DOJ seems to be behind this scenario where we actually will be getting paid more if, in fact, we do have the buyer that comes directly to us. What does that tell me? That tells me that this furthers the, the, the discussion around becoming a great listing agent. And I have some ideas about being a listing agent. Let me let me just say a side note here. I think that you guys need to be taking advantage of the situation where we could go out and take listings at two and three percent, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, even whatever, lower than the people that aren't adapting to this, okay, that are still going to be taking listings at five and six percent. Heck, think about how many listings you can stack up if you do it really quickly. If you take them at 3%, just think about how many listings you can. I'm going to leave that right there, but I'm going to do a Zoom call uh, this coming Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern, and I'm going to train you on exactly that. So this is a Zoom call that you're going to want to be a part of. I'll put the Zoom link, this the straight raw Zoom link in the description of this video. Grab it, save it, put it on your calendar for Tuesday, this coming Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern. I'm going to do a, a training session on how to take advantage of this opportunity to stack your listings to the moon because this is the direction that we're going in. Furthermore, looking at this listing agreement, this is how it's set up. So it's set up for us to make more if the buyer does come directly to us. Hey, hallelujah. Let me go be a listing agent. Let all the buyers come to me because of the situation that the DOJ has thrown upon us. And let me get over here and stack some cheddar. All right. Now, if you go to the, um, this is the uh, the addendum. 
This is the addendum to the, this is like the commission addendum, multiple listing service addendum. And if you go down here where it talks about seller concessions, right? It says concessions are monetarily payments that a seller agrees to contribute towards buyer expenses and other costs a buyer is responsible for in the transaction. So it's like concessions, okay? It could be anything, all right? It may include, but are not limited to costs of escrow or title, lender fees, repairs, inspections, and buyer broker compensation. This is in this document in writing that the concessions can be uh, used for buyer broker commissions. Um, concessions identified in MLS are not promises. They instead indicate that a buy, uh, to a buyer that the seller will be uh, will be will consider offers asking for concessions. Um, Concessions specified in MLS must uh, be allowed to be used for any permissible buyer expenses or costs and must not specify the concessions uh, are, are to be used for broker compensation. So you can't say that it's for broker compensation. It's concessions that we're throwing out there that you can use for anything. However, a term in the buyer offer may specify that the seller agrees to pay all or a portion of the compensation that uh, a buyer broker owes its broker. So it's basically saying that they can put it in the offer, right? That the buyer can put it in the offer. Um, and then here, the seller authorization, seller does not authorize broker to put in the MLS that seller is willing to consider offers asking con uh, for concessions. So, you know, they can say, hey, I'm not, I'm not willing to look at offers where the, um, where they're, where they're wanting us to pay for concessions. Um, or a seller authorizes broker to put an MLS that the seller is willing to consider offers of con uh, concessions if allowed under the MLS rules. Even if permitted by MLS, no amount of the possible concession will be stated in MLS, either as a percentage or a purchase price of the purchase price or a flat fee, unless seller notifies broker in writing of that amount. So basically, and I heard this from um, Ed Zorn, who's over in California that there's going to be a box that says, we'll consider concessions, yes or no, right? Without an amount, right? Right now, I think they still have an amount as well because the seller can, in writing, say, I'll offer X amount. But what he thinks is that it'll eventually go to a yes or no only. No amount will be allowed. We'll see how all that plays out, right? So let's let's talk about the, the three... Let's talk about the three... Um, questions here that you need to think about, right? Moving into this new world. Okay. The first question is when we're thinking about a buyer, who's going to, you know, approaching you wants to see a home, by the way, you're going to have to get something signed before you can even show them a home. It doesn't have to be an exclusive contract. It doesn't have to state commissions, all that stuff. It can be like a one-time show and sell. I haven't seen my documents. My, my, my local board has not sent me listing agreements, buyer broker agreements. I don't, I don't have it yet. I haven't seen them. I can't wait to see them. I can't wait to get my eyes on them. I can't wait to read them because I will be, and I'll share those with you when I get those. But just generally speaking, when I'm thinking about a buyer, right, and they're coming to me and they're giving me a little bit of friction about signing this thing, my question in my head is, is where else are you going to go? Because regardless of where you go, what agent you go to, and even if you go directly to the listing agent, you're going to have to sign a piece of paper. There's no way around this. This is not going to be a hard conversation to have when it comes to getting a buyer to sign an agreement before you show them a piece of property because they're not going to be able to see a house without it unless they just go straight for sell by owner where there's no, there's no agent involved on either side. That's the only scenario they're going to be able to see a home without signing a piece of paper. When they go directly to the listing agent, guess what they're going to get? They're going to get a piece of paper saying, hey, I'm unrepresented. They're going to acknowledge that they're unrepresented. They're going to acknowledge that the listing agent is looking out for the seller to get them the most money, right? Not looking out for you, Mr. Buyer, at all. You're going to have to sign a piece of paper that says that, that you acknowledge that. You might as well have me in your corner, right? You might as well have me in your corner. And when you're trying to articulate value, this is what you need to do. What you need to do is you need to sit down and actually put some real thought into this. You need to put real thought into what your value is, what you do for the buyer that's actually worth the money that they're going to pay you, 
right? And you need to you need to write that paragraph down and you need to rewrite it. You need to revise it and you need to start speaking it out loud. You need to start speaking it out loud a bunch and to where you have this thing memorized to the point where when you say it, it's like breathing. You don't have to think, right? This is just who you are. Okay. I, I wrote a paragraph this morning. I'll read it to you. This was just, this is not revised. This is raw. This is off the cuff, but this gives you a direction that you can go in. Okay. Here's what I wrote. I said, and this is talking to the buyer. All right. Who says, Oh, what, what, you know, why should I pay you? What are you worth? And I'm going to say something along the lines of, most people think all we do as real estate agents is open doors for you to look at after you actually found the home for sale on Zillow. However, that's just a bonus. The work we do to protect you that no one ever talks about is negotiating the best possible deal for you, um, not only on price, but also in terms of the contract, making sure that you know all of your options so that you can make the best decision, which will save you time, a lot of money, and plenty of stress. Once we're under contract, I'll make sure the timeline of the terms of the contract are met and schedule anything needed, inspections, closings, etc. Once the inspection report is in, we will go through it together and I will again negotiate the best terms for you at that time before our due diligence period is over, which will save you even further time and money on repairs. If anything comes up during the deal with financing, title work, lawyers, or the seller, I'll be right there to professionally handle it. I'll also schedule to, uh, the closing for you at your convenience and be right there by your side reading through all the documents with you to make sure everything is in your best interest. This is what I do all day, every day. I'm a pro and I will have your back. Listen, I, I literally wrote that in a matter of five minutes. There's no revisions. There's so many other things you could get very or much more articulated. I just want to give you a framework. I just want to give you an idea of something. You should have your value proposition ready to go in your toolbox at any moment that it needs to come out. Okay, so the question is, is where where else are you going to go? And if your answer is you're just going to go directly to listing agent, great right? Let me sit down and just show you what that looks like, right? And the differences is, you know, in you being not represented, dealing directly with the person that's looking out for the seller only, right? And what it looks like working with me. If you still at that point want to go directly to the listing agent or whatever the case may be, then, then that's great. We're still friends. I'm not trying to get you to use me. I just want you to be the most educated so that you can make the best decision uh, for you and your family. So the first question for me is, where else are you going to go? The next question is that I'm thinking in my head is, is would you go to court without a lawyer? Would you go to court without a lawyer? Right. I, I just, I just had a speeding ticket about um, two, three months ago. First speeding ticket I had and, Oh my gosh, 15 years or so. Um, but anyway, I had a lawyer when I went into court for a speeding ticket. And, you know, a lot of people say, well, you know, buyers can't afford, uh, you know, agents. Well, can they afford lawyers? And they have one every single time. There are people that go into court without a lawyer. There's people that go in and represent themselves. Sure, same, same way people represent themselves buying real estate. People do it, right? It's not unseen. It's it, it happens, absolutely. But it's really the same concept. And a lot of people are going to say, you know, that, that don't believe in the whole buyer agents are worth anything. A lot of people are going to say it's not the same thing. You know, lawyers are actually, you need a lawyer. You don't need a real estate agent. That's fine. Go do some deals on your own and then come back to me and tell me what I'm worth. As a buyer, aid, you, at that point, you're going to be telling me what I'm worth and you're going to be paying me any whatever my price is. Now, there are exceptions to the rule and some people may go out and say, okay, here's what I would fair to say. The first couple deals you do might go all right. That third one's going to be a nightmare. You're going to end up in court if you don't have an agent that actually has your back, does this every day, understands the process and can protect you in so many ways that you have no idea about. But that's okay. Like, I'm okay if you make the decision to go out there and try that. I'll educate you as best I can, but I can't, I can't make you do nothing. 
I cannot, I'm not going to convince anyone of anything, right? A man, a man convinced against his will is of the same opinion still. I'm not trying to convince anyone of anything because it's not going to do any good. You're still going to think what you think, right? I just want to educate so the people can make the best decisions possible. So would you go into court without a lawyer? If not, you might want to think about that when you buy or sell a home, right? The next question that I'm thinking about here is that if they don't want to pay, then you don't have to play, do you? Yeah, you don't. You, listen, what you need to understand about this entire game of real estate is that you don't need any clients. You don't need any one client. All right. You don't need anyone. OK, if they don't want to pay, then you don't got to play. And this is going to make your business so much more efficient because if they want to go directly to the listing agent, great. You don't have to spend any time showing that property, negotiating, doing all the stuff that you're going to do for them. You can go take that time and money and energy and invest it into something that will actually produce. And this person over here that went to the listing agent, they probably going to come back to you. All you got to do is put them on your weekly email and just let them come back whenever they realize. Maybe they will. Maybe they won't. That's okay. You're just building your business. I'm going to tell you something else. Buyers are bonuses. Aha. Buyers are bonuses. You, you, My entire business is built around property owners. And 80% of my business is listings, right? My job when I go to work every day is stacking my listing inventory. Any buyers that I get as a byproduct of those, those actions, great. It's a bonus. If you focus 100% of your actions, your prospecting actions, your, your building your business actions on listings, on going after listings and focusing on property owners, 20% of your business will be buyers. If you focus 100% on listings, 80% of your business, of your closings will be on the listing side. 20% will be on the buyer side. That's because sellers buy, you get referrals, you have people that were uh, that call you about your listings. And by the way, that number is going to go up after all this. You're going to have more buyers calling about your listings that are unrepresented. And guess what? You're going to have a clause in the contract that says you're going to make X amount more if one of those unrepresented buyers buys the property. So you are incentivized to, to make those deals happen. And a lot of, um, I don't know what the rules are going to be with the states that are you know, non-dual agency. We're not talking about dual agency here. We're talking about a non-represented buyer who has signed an agreement, a piece of paper, understanding that they're not, not being represented, understanding that you're looking out for the seller's best interest and not theirs at all whatsoever, that you have zero fiduciary duty to them. And that's not good for the buyers. That's not good for the buyers. But you, what are you going to do? You have to move forward with that deal for who? Your seller's best interest. you got a buyer that wants to buy a property. You have to sell it to them because that's your fiduciary duty to your seller, right? And, you know, I think there's going to be lawsuits that come out of this from all this, all these non-represented buyer deals. But it is what it is. That's what they wanted at the end of the day. And so that's what they're going to get. So what are you going to do? We can't do anything about it. What, what they need to do is show me what the new rules are so that I can go crush it. Okay, this is the mentality that you need to have and you will make more money. Two things here before I go. One, you're going to work more efficiently because you're not going to work with every single buyer. And the ones you do have signed a piece of paper saying they're going to pay you if, in fact, you can't get it from the seller. Right. I, I'm all right with that. I am all right with that. The second thing is, is that if you hit this thing hard, as soon as the new rules come into it, as soon as I get my my documents, from my MLS with the new listing agreements, and I understand what the, what the layout is going to be of the new land, I will immediately go out and stack listings for 3% all day, every day to the moon before all the other agents even realize what's going on, right? But that window of opportunity is only going to last for just a minute, and you better take advantage of it. Be on my Zoom call Tuesday, 3 p.m., Eastern and also right here. Check this video out in the meantime. How to get listings for literally $111 a piece. I break down all the numbers right here. Enjoy, and I'll see you on the next video.